Hello everyone, welcome to Rhythm in Africa and Bira Lesson 4. So we'll be continuing with Nemamu Sasa and in previous episodes we've already done the bass, the rhythm section uh, and the Kutsinira part which is the backing part and uh, that serves as the body of the song. So in this episode we'll be looking at the Kushaura part or the leading part of Nemamu Sasa. Uh, and there is no one way of doing um, the, the Kushaura part. Um, that's where improvisation comes in. So, so improvisation is when uh, artists come up with melodies that fit into the song on the spot, right? So, so you have to understand how Nemam Sasa works for you to be able to to add um, in onto the music. So you can basically do whatever you want during the Gushara part, uh, but there is usually one melody that gets more recognition than others, and gets more remembered than others, and gets more popular. And uh, usually, this melody has is accompanied by a word that 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 gets repeated uh, and in the case of Nema Musasa the word that gets repeated during uh, the melody of the Kushaura part is called Nema Musasa. So I hope this whole thing is slowly starting to, to make sense. So obviously Nema Musasa is a word which we can't do on instruments so I'm gonna invite my sister again to sing the Nema Musasa part but this is a Mbira lesson. So let's go back to the Mbira and uh, learn the melody on the mbira first. So I'm sure by now you've noticed that the mbira has two levels. The notes on the upper level are shorter and that gives them a, a higher pitch. It's almost like the strings on a harp, the shorter strings have, have a higher pitch because they are shorter. So the brain tends to put more, uh, to pay more attention to things that have a high pitch so that you can quickly be alert in case it's a baby crying or someone screaming for help. So we want to take advantage of that alert system uh, to, to, to get you to hear the Kushaura part over the rest of the instruments. So the song is already full of instruments so we can get away with making this as simple as possible by playing only one note at a time uh, and we'll be playing this one note at a time at that accented hit that comes every three beats. Go and check the djembe episode so that this makes more sense. Okay so um, just a short recap. So this is where you will be playing the notes. And we're going to use that old school style for learning again uh, in this episode. So for now, look and listen. Okay, so if we go back to the note layout of the mbira, can you see that the top and bottom uh, level of the mbira on the right side has got the exact same notes, um, but uh, the only difference with these notes are that they are in different octaves. I'm just assuming you know what this means. If you don't, put it in the comments and I'll answer all questions in one video. So that means whatever we're playing on the top row, we can also play the same thing on the bottom row so that there's like more things happening. Um, so uh, what, what, what we're gonna do is to play the bottom row note first, just before the, the top row note and it will sound like this. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so for now we're done with the kushaura part of Nemam Sasa. The only thing left right now are the vocals. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the rhythm section, the bass, the kushaura, the gushinara part, and the vocals, make them into one big educational song, and then um, and then we'll see we'll see how that goes. And that's coming out next week. And you know what to do so that you don't miss that. Wash out.